Greetings YouTube. I have a project coming up in the near future and I may have to remove this guard from my grinder um, to cut some cut a slot in a piece of square stock tubing. Um, I need to make it an inch and a quarter deep and I'm not a hundred percent sure that I can pull that off with the guard in place. So I may have to uh, remove it and that does not thrill me because that'll mean the only thing between that spinning wheel and my hand are going to be a pair of gloves this or my leather ones either way it's, that's not a whole lot to, to protect me and so I thought of what can I do to protect my hand to give it a little bit of protection that I could have on my hand as opposed to on the tool because I think that guard may be in my way then I remember I had one of these kicking around my house for another project um, I always have multiple projects playing or uh, running around um, and this is a steel cover for an industrial style electrical power box um, and I thought well if I take one of these and I fold it here so in this way and fold that here this way and I'll have a, a, a section in the middle which is the single metal layer I can then drill two holes and I can make a strap out of a piece of rubber tubing, use some washers, large washers, and make a, a relatively tight loop so that I can then slide my hand in like this and essentially make a guard about yay wide that'll fit across my knuckles anywhere on my hand I want it to be. I'm gonna fit here in the, in the first joint or, or further back. Um, even if I'm wearing gloves, because this stuff's got some, got some stretch to it. And uh, this is awesome stuff, by the way. It's just a standard tire line, uh, inner tube from a bike. I use this all the time for all kinds of stuff. I got it for free. It's great. Um, it, it was a dead one that they couldn't use any longer because it had a hole in it. But obviously, I don't care that it has a hole in it. And I thought this would also be a good chance for to fuse my new rivet gun, which I just got. Now, I have a smaller rivet gun. I think it's the 1 8 inch size. And I'm going to get rid of that one. I think it's in the basement. I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm going to, because this one will let me use 1 8, 5 30 seconds, 3 30 seconds, 3 16 and quarter inch diameter um, blind rivets. And these are the type of rivets it's going to be using. And I'll be using the quarter inch ones. And I'll be using large washers like this to hold the rubber to the steel plate. Um, it also was a justification to get myself a pair of. Uh, pliers designed to bend metal. Now these aren't locking pliers, which is kind of a bummer. Let's see if I can get these open with one hand. There we go. But because of the way this is situated, they, they come together fairly evenly. Now, and they also, they're steel, they're Wiss. Wiss is a really nice brand. I have picked up a pair of Wiss shears recently. They're just a dream to use. Um, and they had a pair of um, pliers kind of like this at the hardware store that had longer handles. Now longer handles would afford me greater leverage and they were four inches wide as opposed to three inches wide. However, they were essentially just a pair of slip joint style pliers with bigger heads. So there was none of this parallel nature in here. Um, and the gripping jaws were aluminum and not steel and I'm going to be trying to bend steel with this stuff and it's been my experience that when you win the contest between aluminum and steel steel always wins. Um, to isolate this and hold it in place I'm going to put the, one of these plates between these two aluminum pieces and then clamp the whole thing down and this is just going to hold it for me that I will then grab this and bend and these are scrap pieces I picked up someplace. Um, so I'm not too concerned what happens to these as opposed to the jaws on a pair on a tool that I would hopefully use again. Um, and once I get it started, if I can get it to 90 degrees or even if I'm really lucky, slightly more than 90 degrees, um, I will then use a hammer and, uh, and then I will bend it over. Because of this is the way this is shaped and I obviously can't get this very far in there, I'm going to form one completely and then turn around and form the other one completely on this end as opposed to if I had a better 
brake setup where I could bend this and then move it and then bend that at the same time. I used to work at a place called Cushcraft. They made uh, ham radio antennas back, they don't, they're no longer in New Hampshire, they're in some other state, I can't remember, Louisiana maybe, I'm not positive, but um, they had a, an awesome sheet metal brake. It was like six feet wide. It had like a three foot handle. It was it was so awesome. You could bend aluminum, you could bend steel, sheet metal. It was just great. I wish I had access to that thing now. Uh, I used to love working with that break. It would let me, let me make things so easily. It was great. But I don't have that. So I am going to use these and this isolation system, hopefully that will and work, and dry bedding this. And I picked up three of these. Um, they're 60 cents a piece. So even if I screw one up, I'm not too concerned. And I still have a fourth one kicking around for the project I mentioned that I hope will be working on the future. And no, I'm not gonna tell you what that is yet. Because um, I have to have him purchase one of the, the key elements in that project. So until I own that piece, the rest of the project is going nowhere. So first up is going to be clamping one of these things in between there um, on the kitchen table because that's the most convenient place I have to bend this on. It's nice and thick and heavy and I can get in there and clamp it down and then uh, we can see if I can uh, I can bend it with these. It'd be kind of cool if I could. I'm, I'm hoping to get a nice crisp bend. This is four inches wide and my jaws are only three inches wide but that's that's still a lot of surface area so if I plant them in the middle I think I can get a nice clean bend and again uh, as long as I get to about 90 degree point I can then utilize my uh, my, uh, my ball, peen, ball peen hammer to uh, facilitate the, the, the crease from that point. So here we go we've got this clamped down and I'm now going to give it a try at bending it we're going to see how that goes. Um, these are not perfectly parallel, but the distance and the bottom is what matters because I'm bending in that direction, going down. And we're going to see how well that works. And I'm hoping I can get the bend, it to bend and not just, you know, pull it out of the jaws. This is, again, this is, again, I don't have a break. <laughs> and so I'm kind of making my own break here. Um, I told my wife about this and I told her I was going to buy a pair of these and she said, you need two a pair of them? I said, no, no, I can't. I can't actually just hold one in either hand and bend this, dear. I'm not quite that strong. Um, so I'm going to have to bolt it down and then and then try it uh, to bend it uh, while it's not moving. So we'll see how well this goes. So um, let's, let's see what happens. That went surprisingly well. Um, so... I've got a bend. I don't know if it's perfectly even. So now we're going to take this and we're going to try uh, completing the process with the ball peen. Because I really don't have... I don't think I can bend it any further than this. I may pull it out a little, but let me see. I don't know. I want to keep the middle flat if I can. Um, this is why I wish I had a real break, but I don't. So we're going to see if I can just kind of uh, put a little English on it, if you will, and bend it over the rest of the way with the uh, with the uh, with the ball peen. Alrighty, so I'm using my V channel here as a stop, and I'm hammering straight down, and I've already got it beyond the 90 degree point, which is good. Now I need to see if I can bring it in over and maybe back it off a little so I don't lose as much metal here so I may have to take a smaller bite on the other side again I've never done this so you know live and learn and this metal is relatively thick and what's one of the reasons I chose it it's not paper thin I didn't want real sh didn't want really thin sheet metal I wanted something that was gonna have a little substance so if I touch it with a blade that the spinning disc it's it's gonna give me time to get my body out of the way before it cuts through um, so I don't have an anvil, unfortunately, but I do have this. So I'm not the first person to do this, apparently. So I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to start working it towards me. 
striking at an angle this way and see how that goes. Um, uh, and you know, hopefully not like uh, mash my fingers into in potatoes. That would be uh, that would be bad. So here we are at the kind of walking it back stage. So I'm trying to move the metal back a little so I don't take up as much as I had originally. And it's coming out pretty square. Um, it's not perfect. I may be able to tune it up a little bit more, but maybe not. Um, it would be awesome if I had an anvil. It really would, but I don't. Or even a much larger piece of metal than I have here. I really would like... Um, if I can't have an anvil, I think a like a 12-inch length of railroad tie would be really awesome, particularly if I had a horn cut in one end. I had an opportunity to buy a railroad anvil once at a yard sale, and like an idiot, I didn't buy it. The guy only wanted like 20 bucks, and I didn't want to spend that much money at that point in the day, and I should have, because 20 bucks for a railroad anvil was a steal, and sometimes you don't make good calls. Well, it's getting there, so keep hammering. It's a good thing that I own the building. There's something wonderfully satisfying about hitting a piece of metal and having it move in the direction you want it to go in. It is not perfect. It is not perfectly straight. But I have not done anything like this in well over 20 years. And I'm working with what you could generously consider poor equipment. <laughs> I'm using a V-channel on a carpet um, to... Uh, to hammer things out, and again, I not the first person to have done this thing, done this. Uh, but that that one side's done, so now I can go put it back in the vise or the, the the brake rig I have in the kitchen, and bend the other side, and then do the exact same thing to that side. And when I'm done, we will be to the hole drilling stage, where we're going to put two holes. Um, probably right about where my fingers are because we want to be have we want to be able to get those one and a quarter inch washers fully on. I want to make it. I want them inside this uh, this distance, and uh, this and then once we have the holes uh, drilled, I will then uh, um, use my rivet gun and hopefully rivet everything together. Rivet the plate through the metal straps, I mean, rather through the rubber strap, and then through the washer I've got, and then pull the whole thing together into one cohesive permanent structure. At least that's the goal. Um, but this is much more rigid now than it was, um, which is kind of the what I, and it's, and it's narrower, because again, I want something that's a little bit smaller than, than the actual width of my knuckles like that. So when I'm finished, I think, yeah, I think it should just come in. I think it should just come in. And it definitely give me a little hand, a little hand protection over what I have at the moment, which again, if I take that guard off my grinder, is, is nothing but a glove. Uh, that's not good. So, back to the kitchen! All right, we've got to this point, and it's starting to get a little tight. So I'm gonna use my grips here, my my whisk uh, uh, grippers to hold this while I continue to roll that over because frankly I really don't want to make blood squirt out from underneath my fingernails. I've broken up my vice grips for this section in here. The other ones were holding it but they were sliding around a bit because they don't lock. I know that Vice Grips makes a pair of bending jaws like the ones I just picked up from Wiss that do lock, but I didn't have access to them today and I didn't want to shag down a pair. So I purchased those and those really did bend the metal quite well. And in the future I need to bend thinner metal than this, because again, this is pretty darn thick. Those will work admirably, particularly if I have to do any aluminum. If I want to make any more aluminum shields, particularly aluminum armor maybe, something like that, those will work really well. So I'm quite happy I picked those up. But now we're at this point where I've gotten, I've got it to the point where I'm almost completely all the way over. Um, so I pulled these out. Um, and these also have a better offset. So I can hold it at this, ang this angle here. And that way I've got my hand not kind of plastered against the floor. So um, a little more whacking and then we'll be done.
All right. Hey, there's a cat trying to get in the closet. It's a cat that just succeeded to get in the closet. Very shortly, she'll panic because she, she can't get out. She's like that. Um, so we are done with the cold rolling process. And this is not bad seeing as this is cold rolled, cold hammered steel here. I, I, I did not heat this at all. I did not anneal it, nothing. It's not hardened in, in, the, in any way, shape or form. I have no clue what this stuff is. Now I do find it interesting that my second side is much more even than my first side. You look at that. The second one I did, which is the one which is not clamped, is almost perfectly parallel with the edge. And it's a little more impressive because when I actually made the bend, the bend was at more of an angle than the first bend. So just from going from one side to the other, I was able to pull up enough skill to to move the steel where I wanted it to get it to be even. So it's, I mean, like I said, I haven't done this in 20, 20 years. And the fact that I have some muscle memory, apparently, of actually moving steel around with a, with a, a hammer on a big punk of metal makes me very, very happy. It means that in the future, I'm hoping that I actually can actually do more of this kind of thing, particularly when I get myself some better tools like a big hunk of metal, even like a piece of three inch square stock of solid steel that was like a foot long, even that would do it because that's less likely to bounce around because it's a whole lot heavier. Then I could take that outside and, and put it on the ground. Here, I, went, I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to ruin the V channel. So I wanted to do it on something that it can absorb some of the impact. But if I have a really big piece of steel, I can get that, take that outside in the driveway um, and then just smack it around and not worry about it. So we're done with that section. Next is going to be laying out the two holes I need to drill. Um, and then drilling two holes. And here, folks, we have my new drill press. This is a Sears drill press using a Sears drill. Um, and let me sit down here. Ugh. All right, so this drill press works like this. It, this whole unit is fully adjustable from this knob back here so I could bring this. I have it in the highest location at the moment and I have it at the highest location because I want to be able to get a C clamp in here. Um, and at the moment this has got some nice clearance and it will go through quite nicely. I don't have a stop set up. It's got a stop right here so I could set a stop if I wanted to but I don't really need a stop. As soon as I get through the metal I will cease drilling. Um, and I want to be able to have a C clamp because I want to be able to bolt this in place before I drill it. I'm also going to, I put two dots here and I'm going to uh, uh, use my nail set and put two little pricks right there so that um, it has a bit something to bite on um, when I go in there. And then I'm going to start it very carefully and then I'm going to put a little lubrication on here before I continue. Um, and this is a drill rig I picked up at a yard sale for $2. Now, because I don't want to be worried about holding the speed and holding the speed on one of these things and keeping consistent is very difficult to do. I've got a hose clamp up here and because the hose clamp is, it's, it's oval essentially when it's tightened. So, so essentially I have a switch that will let me turn it on and turn it off. Uh, unfortunately, that's the slowest speed I can go with this particular drill. My half inch drill actually has a more subtle speed, but it's not gonna fit in here because this is designed for a 3 8 inch drill, which is why I have this I picked this up at a, at, a, at a flea market for four bucks. I picked this up for two bucks. So I've got a total of six dollars into this and I have a functioning drill press. And I will fully admit that there's a smidge of walking in there. It's not perfect, but for six dollars and it's gonna let me drill things far more efficiently and more easily and consistently than things I've done in the past. And I can remove this and it's got a built-in V channel so I can drill cylindrical things, 
obviously not overly large cylindrical things. Um, and it's got, I don't have, I had, don't have any bolts yet. I need to get some bolts that I can use as bolt and so I can have toggles. I may see if I can find some toggles. They may make aftermarket toggles that would let me do that. And also I've got here so I can put in a sacrificial base piece, for example, out of wood, or I could bolt larger objects on here with, with you know, the T, T head set up here. And this lets me bolt it to a table if I want to at the moment. It's just sitting on my table here because, again, I'm, I'm only drilling through, you know, that much metal. So I'm not too concerned about the whole thing shaking on me. Um, so uh, the next up is going to be marking this, marking it, uh, locating you exactly where I want it, clamping it down, making a small mark, and then going ahead and drilling all the way through. And I will probably use some Dawn dish detergent as a lubricant because it is the opposite of oil. <laughs> if you get it on things, it does not make it horribly difficult to clean up. It is a soap. Um, and it's perfectly safe. You can They clean penguins with this stuff. It's, it's harmless. Um, so that's the next step. Alrighty, there we go. I'm all the way through. Uh, my hose clamp idea did not work because as I put pressure on the bit to bite into the metal, the motor would slow down, so I had to kind of compensate for that by increasing the speed. So I essentially ran this with my left thumb, which works fine because I can adjust it as I go. Oh, um, in case anyone was wondering, I used my square here um, to bring the drill bit as close to 90 degrees to this uh, outrigger here as possible and I used these two little adjustments to move it in and out until I got it where I wanted it in case anybody was wondering. Um, so, well, hey, well, you look at that. I got, hold on a second, I got a piece of metal in my hand. Yay for metal chips. Um, that's why I vacuum when I'm done. So now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to get rid of the metal chips that I can. And then I'm going to turn this thing around and uh, drill the other hole. So there we go. We now have um, holes for my uh, rivets. Interestingly, when I opened the rivet gun up, I hadn't actually opened it up. There are no instructions. So if you don't know how to use a rivet gun, you're in trouble. Um, fortunately, I know how to use a rubber gun. Back when I worked at Cushcraft, as I mentioned in the past, uh, we made antennas and we had some awesome pneumatic rubber guns. They would just pull the trigger once and it would set it, pull a second time, it would snap off the excess uh, shaft. It was just awesome. I love those things. Really wish I had one now, but I've got this, which is, um, which is a uh, hand, hand one, pretty good size, so it should be... Uh, quite capable of handling the job at hand. And uh, so two holes are now done. Um, this is gonna be the outside. So the rivets will go that way and then you get the finished look like that when it's done. It'll just be a, a cap. You won't, see. obviously the shaft is gonna be gone. And on the inside is going to be uh, the inner tube with a washer to hold the sandwich, whole thing together and um, I will use a pair of vice grips to hold everything in place while I am using the rivet gun because I don't want everything sliding around. And this is the container I use to hold my Dawn dish detergent with a small Q-tip, a donation of my wife, and she didn't even know it. Um, so I'm actually now done with the drill rig. I'm going to put my drill bits away. I actually had to go up one step. I used a quarter inch and it was exactly a quarter inch hole and I couldn't get the rivet through. So it went through the, the there, but it must have been just slightly eccentric. eccentric. So I went up one step and that's fine and it's not going to be enough of a, an issue to not have it rivet properly. So I'm going to put away, get rid of this, and then vacuum up the table with the hose. And then I'm going to put the vacuum aside until I'm done and at the end of the process I will vacuum the floor. Because I don't want metal chips on my floor. Because um, that happens sometimes. But you're going to, but you know, try to be safe. And uh, and then in this little residue, I'll just, just rinse down the sink. So a couple of metal chips, it won't hurt anything. I got ahead of myself. I just decided I would try riveting it first before I cleaned up. So there you go. 
that is what the blind rivet looks like when it's installed. You can see I doubled this up so that it would have a little more um, mass behind it, less likely to tear out on me. Um, and this is what the, the shaft looks like when it's been pulled through the rivet. Um, so now I've marked off and cut this. I'm going to fold it here. I'm going to use my hole punch to punch uh, through the rubber, which I already did. I did on that side as well. And then I just sandwiched it all together, used a pair of vice grips to hold it together, and then pulled it through. And it worked. Uh, it worked really well. And uh, I really like the look. You can hope. I, I hope to do a lot of blind rivets in the future because I really like this look. Um, it is not something that can be broken down as easily as a nut and bolt, which I've used a lot in the past, but you get a much cleaner finish like that. And I have some ideas in the future for some shields and stuff, and I would be putting fasteners in a location that will never, ever be taken apart, ever, that you could not access after I'm done. So a blind rivet is the perfect solution to that. I'm never gonna have to worry about it coming loose under normal use. Um, this comes loose, then something bad has happened. <laughs> something ba bad enough that I'm not gonna have to worry about the fact that there's a loose rivet. Um, so I need to fold and punch and put the other rivet in, and then I think I'm done. And there we go, folks. One hand guard that I can slide into my down here if I need to or leave it here, and it still leaves me, if I have it in the middle, it leaves me lots of flexibility. I can still use my hand fully. Obviously, I'd be wearing it on my right hand, but I can't hold the camera conveniently in my right hand because the buttons are on the right side of the camera. Um, so there we have it. Oh, I apologize for the fan noise in the background. It's a smidge warm today. Um, mostly this has been an experiment in a little bit of smithing I mean, obviously very basic smithing, and the use of the blind rivets, and just some tests, you know what I mean? And this is a test piece. It, it will serve a function. It will hopefully keep my hand safe while I'm using my grinder if I have to take the guard off. Um, but mostly it's an experiment to see if I could take whoop, one of these and turn it into one of these? And the answer is yes. Oh, and here are those, the Wiss shears I mentioned, um, the W10TMs. Uh, review coming up at some point in the future. Just awesome shears. Um, you, uh, pick them up at Home Depot, get yourself a pair. They're really sweet. Um, solid metal all the way through. That's just very comfortable. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with this. It came out exactly the way I wanted to. I mean, it's not perfectly square, like I said, uh, the second second side came out a lot better than the first side, um, so I was able to remember a few things I used in the past, um, and uh, I ended up with something which actually will keep my hand safe, which I really appreciate. Appreciate, and it shows me that I will be able to do things in the future that entail bending, uh, hammering, drilling with my new drill rig, and using blind rivets. So this has been a skill building process, really, to tell you the truth. Um, and I'm very happy with the results. The skills are still present. I still remember how to do things. I would like a proper drill press. Um, I have plans, and I would like, well, plans in my head, of building my own workbench at some point out of three-quarter plywood and uh, two-by-fours. Um, there's a couple of things standing in the way of that. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to make some lap joints without a table saw. But I think I can figure out how to do it at some point. Um, and if I do that, I'm going to see me, I may invest myself in a proper table saw. I mean, a proper, proper drill press, rather, which will be able to get a constant low speed, which is really good for drilling steel. Um, this is not ideal for drilling steel, but it's better than doing it by hand. And it's much more... It's much safer. I can clamp things down, and I can uh, I can most definitely do things in a more uh, repeatable manner. And I'm really quite happy. And I'll be leaving that drill exactly where it is. I've tuned it in as best I can. It's not going anywhere. Um, it's going to leave it right where it is. Uh, I, I bought I bought it for that purpose, and and it's uh, and it's 
working admirably. And again, for a $6 buy-in, I don't think you can go wrong there. So, there you go, folks. This has been um, a skill-building process and making a handguard.